Hello everyone, welcome to Math World. This video is to discuss Cambridge International AS and A level mathematics paper 6, which is the probability and statistics 1 for May June 2019 and the code is 9709/62. So let's get started. Question number 1. Two ordinary fair dice are drawn and the numbers obtained are noted. The event S is the sum of the numbers is even, and the event T is defined as the sum of the numbers is either less than 6 or a multiple of 4 or both. Now, showing your working, determine whether events S and T are independent. Okay, so for this case, I will draw a table because it involves two dice. Right, two fair dice. So here, a fair dice has six faces. So I will label one to six. So this is for, okay, two fair dice. So this is dice one. And here is the dice two. So again, dice 2 has 6 faces. Okay, now, I will just label directly the outcomes for the events as the sum of the numbers is even. So it means that, so 1 plus 1, even number. 1 plus 3, even number. Okay, so 1 plus 5, even number. So 2 plus 2, is even number 2 plus 4, 2 plus 6. So for all the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, it will be matching with 1, 3, one, three 5 on the other side. So here I will just rewrite, just follow the patterns. So for, two, for 4 and 6 on the first dice, it will be matched to, to four, 2, 4, 6 on the second dice as well. So 2, 4, 6. So all these are the all the out, all these are the outcomes for the event S. Now for the T, okay, T, I use green color. T is the sum of the numbers that less than either less than six. Okay, less than six, the sum it will be one plus two, one plus three, one plus four. Okay, and then here two plus one. 2 plus 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. Then 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus 4, 3 plus 2 is 5. Probably 4 plus 1. Then 5 plus 1 cannot. Or multiple of 4. So the sum is a multiple of 4. Means that probably uh, the sum to the sum is 4, 8, 12, and so on. So 2 plus 6, it will be. Okay, then 3 plus 5, it will be 8, because the 4 already counted, so 4 plus 4 will be 8, 4 plus 6 is 10, cannot, we need 12, the next one, so 5 plus 3 is 8, right, then 5 plus 6 is 11, cannot, so 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 is a multiple of 4, then 6 plus uh, 2 is 10. Right, so this will be the outcomes for the S and T. So now to check independent events, right? To check independence events, so P A intersects B, it will be P A times B B. That means A and B are independent. Okay, so now I need to check the multiplication whether it's same as the union, the intersection probability or not. So from here, PS. So total outcomes will be 36 because 6 from each dice. So 36. So now you just need to count how many times you see the S. So obviously, every column you will have 3 S. So 6 times 3, 18. Okay, then this is half. So probability of getting the T, just calculate the number of T. So the first column... 
first column 4t, second column 4t, then third column 3t. So then fourth column 2t, fifth column 1t, and sixth column 2t. So that means here total it will be 16 out of 36, and this is going to be 4 over 9. So now probability of S intercept T. S intercept T means that you see S and T at the same time. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so here I get 10 over 36. This is 5 over 18. So now double check PS times PT. What is the multiplication? That is half times 4 over 9. Then you are getting 2 over 9. Okay, so obviously 2 over 9 is not same as 5 over 18. So since probability of S times probability of T is not equal to probability of S intercept T, therefore, I will just write since P S times P T is different from P S intercept T, hence S and T are not independent events. Okay, not independent events. So that's all for this working. Question number two, the volume of ink in a certain type of ink cartridge, cartridge has a normal distribution with mean 30 milliliters and standard deviation 1.5 milliliters. So people in an office use a total of eight cartridges, cartridges of this ink per month. Okay. Find the expected number of cartridges per month that contain less than 28.9 milliliter of this ink. So basically this is normally distributed. It will be 30 milliliters for the mean and standard distribution 1.5. So we always write variance. So now property of less than 28.9. I need to find out for one cartridge first. So now for your information, if your x is normally distributed with mean mu variance sigma squared, when we standardize it, it will be x minus mu over sigma. That means now here, when I standardize, it will be p standardized normal random variable 28.9 minus 30, and the sigma is the sigma is basically 1.5 because 1.5 squared that is the variance. Then from here, you will be getting p z less than 0.733 right and then here oh sorry it should be a negative negative 0.733 so now we we'll sketch a graph negative 7.3 negative 0.733 is on the left side and this is a region because less right so now to get the probability we need to reflect it to be positive to get 0 0.733 and then the region is towards right side. So now I will write this probability is basically same as P Z more than 0 0.733. And the orange region is counted using total probabilities 1 minus P Z less than 0 0.733. So here I will be getting equals to 1 minus P Z or Z less than 0.733 okay so now here when you read the table the normal table you will be getting 0.7682 for that probability and when you minus from 1 that is 0.2318 now the question asking for expected number of cartridges so you are using 8 right so this 0.2318 is for one cartridge so now our expected value is just times 8 because now you are considering for one for 8 cartridges so it will be 1.8544 I would say it is estimated to be 2 so that is the solution for this question
Question number three. The probability that Janice will buy an item online in any week is 0 0.35. Janice does not buy more than one item online in any, in any week. First part, find the probability that in a 10-week period, Janice buys at most seven items online. This is 10 week. Okay, this is any week. So from here, I will say now, because we know that Janice will only buy one item in a week. So now you are considering 10 week. So I will say uh, it's expected to be 10 items, right? Because at most seven items, that is what you need to count at most seven items. So this will be the number of items. So since in any week, it will be just one item because it's mentioned Janice does not buy more than one item. Okay, so 10 weeks means it will be expected to be 10 items. So my N is 10 and this 10 is actually 10 items. Okay, so then the probability is 0 0.35. And now at most 7 items, so P at most is maximum, maximum 7 items. So now your binomial distribution, X is binomial distributed with NP, the probability of X equals to lowercase letter X is NCX, PX, QN minus X. And then the X is starting from 0, then until N. So less equals to 7, I would say it will be from 0 to 7, but it's a lot of calculations. So I will use the complementation rule. That is 1 minus the rest. That means it is 8 until 10. Okay, and then apply this formula. Your N, your P is 0 0.35. Therefore, your Q is 1 minus 0 0.35 to get 0 0.65. Then I will be getting 10 C8, 0 0.35, power 8, 0 0.65, power 2, plus 10 C9, 0 0.35 degree 9 times 0 0.65 degree 1 and then plus 0 0.35 degree 10. Okay, then from here you will get 1 minus. Now for each of these calculation for each of these values, I have calculated the their own values that will be 4.28. 138 times 10 power negative 3. The next one is 5.12302 times 10 power negative 4. And then followed by 2.75855 times 10 power negative 5. Okay, then this is again 1 minus 4.82127 times 10 power negative 3. And here I will be getting 0 0.99518. Now I round up to three significant figures, that is 0 0.995. So that is the first part answer. Part two, the probability that Janice buys at least one item online in a period of N weeks is greater than 0 0.99. Find the smallest possible value of N. So now, it becomes x is binomial distributed because of n weeks, right? So it will be n items, then the same probability. And now you are given probability that buys at least one item. So x greater equals to 1, and the probability is greater than 0 0.99. Okay, so greater equals to 1 means 1 until n. So I will write 1 minus x equals to 0 is greater than 0 0.99 and this is going to be 1 minus when ps goes to 0 means now remember ps goes to 0 means no success means it will be all failures so remember here my q is 0 0.65 so it will be 0 0.65 degree n it will be n failures that is greater than 0 0.99 so this negative 0 0.65 degree n i will move to the other side to make it a positive, this 0 0.99 moved to left side. So when I move the 0 0.65 
the path and to the other side that is basically I read from the right side okay so you will be getting 0 0.65 degree and now it's less than because I, it has been moved to right side then 1 minus 0 0.99 is basically 0 0.01 and now to get the end here I have to take log both sides so you will get log 0 0.65 degree n is less than log 0 0.01 and then we have a formula log or log or lg up to you okay the lg means it is the log with base 10 right so a power b that is going to be b log a so then the n will be brought down now be careful this log 0 0.65 is less than is negative value i would say it's negative value okay this is negative and this is negative right so if i move this 0 point log 0 0.65 to the other side it means that i'm dividing by a negative value then you have to change the inequality sign that means now here i will write My n is greater than log 0 0.01 divided by log 0 0.65. Okay, because when you divide or times by negative, the inequality sign must be changed. So that means here, my n is greater than 10.69. So that's why it's mentioned here, smallest n. So n greater than 10.69, it can be 11, 12, 13, and so on. Therefore, from here, the smallest and it will be 11. So that is the solution for part 2. Number 4, it's known that 20% of male giant pandas in a certain area with more than 121 kg kilograms and 71.9% with more than 102 kg now weights of male giant pandas in this area have a normal distribution find the mean and standard deviation of the weights of male giant pandas in this area okay so now let's say the male giant panda the weights is denoted by m okay normally distributed it will be mu and variance sigma squared because both are not given. You need to calculate them, right? So then it's mentioned that the weight is greater than 121 kilograms is 20%. 20% is basically 0 0.2, okay? And the other one is more than 102 kilograms. So P M more than 102, it will be 71.9 percent that is 0 0.719 so now i have to standardize both so x is normally distributed with mean mu variance sigma squared when you standardize it will be x minus mu over sigma then now here i will be getting p z or z more than 1 to 1 minus mu over sigma that is 0 0.2 so now i will sketch a graph to decide where is this line so now, for information, when it is greater than 0, okay, the z or z is greater than 0, property is 0 0.5. But then this is only 0 0.2. Obviously, the line is on the right side because here is 0 0.2 because it's mentioned greater than. Okay, so from the line onwards to the right side. So from here, I know that that is positive value. But then when you refer to the normal graph, you are given the region towards the left side. That means this is going to be 0 0.8. So now I will write P, Z or Z less than 1 to 1 minus mu over sigma is basically 0 0.8. And now from table, I can get the critical value. From table, P, Z or Z less than 0 0.8 for 2, that is 0 0.8. So now I will just compare these two equations. Okay, obviously 1 to 8 minus mu over sigma that is 0 0.8 and then I will be getting the first equation by moving up the sigma so that is 1 to 1 minus mu equals to 0. Point, oh sorry uh, when I compare okay when I compare this equals to 0 
So I overlook that. So 842, this is going to be 0 by 842 sigma first equation. Okay, now to find the mu and lambda, the mu and sigma, I need to calculate, I need to get two equations and solve the two equations simultaneously. Now my second equation comes from the second probability given in the question. Okay, so then from here again I standardize it. So it means P Z more than 102 minus mu over sigma. That is 0 0.719. And again, sketch a graph to see the region or to see the position of this line. Here is 0. And again, more than the line, more than 0, P Z or Z more than 0, that is 0 0.5. Now obviously 0, 0 0.7. 1, sorry, 0 0.719 is greater than 0 0.5 and somewhat this is more than. So obviously the line is on the left side. Okay, and then here is going to be 0 0.719. So I will label this as 102 minus mu over sigma. But then obviously from here, the, re the line, the critical line is negative. Therefore, I have to reflect because the negative line is not available in the table. So once I reflect, the region will be 0 0.719 and then the line here, it will be negative of the previous line because the previous line is negative, then now becomes positive. So you have to times a minus to the line. Okay, and then from here, I know that um, P, Z or Z less than negative of 102 minus mu over sigma, that is 0 0.719. And now I can get this probability from the table. Just read this probability to get the critical value. So that is Z or Z less than 0 0.58 equals to 0 0.719. Then now I equate the, okay, this equals to 0 0.58. And that is my second equation. So negative of 102 minus mu over sigma equals to 0 0.58 and now I will move the minus together with the sigma to the other side so I will get 102 minus mu equals to negative 0 0.58 sigma this will be my second equation so now to solve the mu and sigma I need to solve these two simultaneous equations so since both also minus mu on the left side I will be using the elimination method Okay, which is first equation minus second equation. So 1 to 1 minus 1, 0, 2 is basically 19. The minus mu will be cancelled off. Then right side, 0 0.842 sigma minus minus 0 0.58 sigma because I use first minus second equation. You will be getting 1.422 sigma. Therefore, your sigma is 19 over 1.422. That is going to be 13.3615 and now I round up to three significant figures that is 13.4 as the final answer. Now to find, a, to find a mu, you can substitute into first or second equation because both also have mu. But I will substitute into sec, uh, first equation. So to get the mu from the first equation, this minus mu will be moved to right side and 0 0.842 sigma will be moved to left side. So it becomes minus. So that means now here I will be getting mu equals to 1 to 1 minus 0 0.842. The sigma will be replaced by this actual value, 13.3615. Or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is actual value. I would say it is a value with more decimal places. Then my mu will be more accurate. Then here is going to be 109.7496. And now I round up to one decimal to three significant figures, that is going to be 110. That is my mu and sigma. Question 5. Mariam has seven sweets in a tin. Six are toffees and one is a chocolate. Okay, one chocolate. She chooses one sweet at random and, take it, and takes it out. Her friend adds three chocolates to the tin. Then Mayam takes another sweet at random out of the tin. First part, draw a fully labelled 
tree diagram to illustrate this situation. Okay, so initially, seven sweets. So over seven, over seven. And six are toffees. So here, toffees. And this will be chocolate. Okay, so six and one. So she chooses one as render and takes it out. Her friend adds three chocolates. Okay, so here. Okay, now, this means, okay, Mayam took one toffee. So, when took one toffee means that initially six now becomes five. But her friend adds three chocolates. So, initially seven. Seven, you minus one, left six. Six plus this three, it becomes nine. Total nine sweets, right? Then now, if five over nine for the toffees, Chocolates will be 4 over 9. Because initially 1 chocolate adds 3 chocolates, it will be 4 over 9. So 4 chocolates. So if let's say at first chocolates, right? So from the chocolates, she took 1 toffees. So it means that she took 1 chocolate. After that, uh, she took 1 chocolate. That means now left no chocolate. Okay. So toffee, toffees will be 6. Then over 9 because adds another 3. Right? So that means now here, for the chocolates, it will be 3 over 9 because she has took 1 chocolate out. Then her friend adds 3 chocolates. Therefore, it's 3 over 9. So that will be the 3 diagram. Now part 2, draw up the probability distribution table for the number of toffees taken. Okay, so now for number of toffees taken means that actually she took once and then once her friend added three chocolates, then she took another one. That means now maximum number of chocolates or number of toffees that can be taken will be two. Okay, so I have to calculate P, T equals to zero, toffees equals to zero. And then it will be t equals to zero means that the first one is chocolate. Let's see. Let's say t means toffees. C means chocolate. Okay. C one means first draw, and the C two means second draw. So now first, first C and second C. So one over seven times three over nine. That is. Probability of t equals to 0. Then you get 1 over 21. Okay. So then from here, I need to calculate when pt equals 1. pt equals 1 means that for the two draws, right, you get one toffees. One toffee. So that one you have to consider maybe the first draw or the second draw. The easiest way is I do not calculate that. I will just calculate t equals to 2. So when PT equals to 2 means that first draw, you get the toffee, and the second draw also toffee. So now, T1 and T2, so 6 over 7 times 5 over 9. That is a shortcut. So 6 over 7 times 5 over 9. Then you will be getting 10 over 21. Okay, then now, I know that PT equals to 1, it will be 1 minus pt equals to 0 plus pt equals to 2. So there is 1 minus 1 over 21 plus 10 over 21. So 1 over 21 plus 10 over 21, that is 11 over 21. So you minus that value from 1, you will be getting 10 over 21. Therefore, with these three probabilities, I can draw the table. So this is the table.
So when PT equals to 0, I get 1 over 21. PT equals to 1, 10 over 21. And followed by 10 over 21. So to make sure that your table is correct, this is the probability distribution table. for toffees. Okay, so make sure the total of these three properties is 1. That is the condition for the property distribution table. So done for this question. Now find the mean number of toffees taken. This is the expected value. ET. ET is basically summation T times the probability. So it means refer to the table just times the T with the probabilities. Right? Just times means that times all this and plus all together. So since the first one is 0, no need to times. I will just write 1 times 10 over 21 plus 2 times 10 over 21. So here I will write 1 times 10 over 21 plus 2 times 10 over 21 then you will be getting the answer of 30 over 21 this can be simplified into 10 over 7 that is the actual value now part 4 find the probability that first sweet taken is chocolate given that given that is the conditional probability the second sweet taken is a toffee means now p a slash b b is the condition okay given that the slash is given that this is p a intersects b over p b which means now here i will write p given that okay first sweet so chocolate given that second sweet is toffee t2 so use this formula conditional probability that is PC1 intersects T2 over PT2. So C1 intersects T2. Refer to the tree diagram. C1, T2. Multiply. 1 over 7 times 6 over 9. Alright. So 1 over 7 times 6 over 9. PT2 means that as long as the second draw is toffee. So it means that it could be the first one toffee or second one. Uh, the first one is chocolate. So I times these two and plus. Right? 6 over 7 times 5 over 9. Or, or is plus. 1 over 7 times 6 over 9. That is going to be 6 over 63 divided by 36 over 63. Then you will be getting 6 over 36 because both 63 can be cancelled off since they are both the denominator. Then here it will be 1 over 6 for the final answer. Okay, six first part. Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a box and whisker plot to represent a set of data. Okay, so the advantage is the spread of data can be seen easily. Or can be seen okay the spread is basically the highest minus the lowest value or you can say the skewness right probably here you can write or skewness or range right so now the disadvantage 
This advantage means that you are given limited data. You cannot calculate the mean. Okay, because it only shows the media, median, Q1, lower quarter and upper quarter and also lowest and, and highest value. So limited data information. Not able to calculate. Mean mood. Standard deviation or variance. Okay, so these are the advantages, advantage and disadvantage for the box and whisker plot. Now part two, the times in minutes taken to run a marathon were recorded for a group of 13 marathon runners and were found to be as follows. State which of the mean, mode or median is most suitable as a measure of central tendency for these times. Explain why the other measures are less suitable. Okay, so now when you look at the data here, we know that the smallest 180, okay, then the biggest 768, but the rest of the values, okay, will be in between 180 to 332, right? Then suddenly, there is a huge number, 768. So, because of the 768, we do not choose mean, right? So, not mean because or as there is a large outlier. That is... 768 because the rest are between 180 and 332 okay so we do not choose the mean now we do not choose the mode as well because when you look at the value here there's no i mean all the terms just occurs once right there's no repeated value so no mode as there is no repeated value So, we don't choose mean, we don't choose mood, that means we must choose median. Therefore, median is most suitable. Okay, so done for the analysis. Now, part three, another group of 33 people run, ran the same marathon and their times in minutes were as follows. On the grid below, draw a box and whisker plot to illustrate the times for these 33 people. Okay, so first of all, we need to get the median. And by studying the data, all the data are arranged in order. So now I will write median equals to half of 33 people, so 33 plus 1. This is the position. So that means you are getting data number 17. That is our median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17. So it will be, sorry, 1, 2, this is 11. Here is 11, 11 plus 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is This is 17, so 280. Okay, so now I need to look at the Q1. Q1 is basically half of the previous. So basically, previous, you can say um, 1 over 4 of the total, or sometimes we can just say half of the previous. So previous here, basically, you have 16. This is data number 16. All right, so when you divide 16 into 2, that will be 8. So, 1, 2, 3, this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, it means that it will be 8 on the left 
and 8 on the right. This will be the median. So your Q1 is here. Therefore, you can just write Q1 is half of 254 plus 258. Okay, that means you are getting 256. Then now your Q3, the upper quarter. Again, here for the up, uh, second half, you will have another 16 because we know that first half I get 16, then second half I will get 16. So then it will be, this is 18, right? Or probably you can just count. This is the, uh, I should have another 8. So 1, 2, 3. No, I use another color. Okay, same goes to the previous. I mean, same as previous. So it will be between 8 and 9, right? So that means down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it will be in between 3, 2, uh, 3, 2, 7 and 3, 3, 1. So here it will be half of 3, 2, 7 plus 3, 3, 1. Otherwise, you can just calculate 1 over 4 of 33 plus 1 position and 3 over 4 of the Q3. Okay, 3 over 4 of the 34 position. So, this is 3 to 9. So, now here, I will just write down lowest value. That is 190. Then, the greatest value. That is 375. Okay, so we have enough information to draw the box and whisker plot. So minimum 190, maximum 375. So 190 probably here, I will start this at with 200. This is 240, 300, 350. Okay, I need up to 375. So here is 100. Okay, now my lowest value is 190. So look at here. 10 boxes, but 50 units. So 50 divided by 10, that is 5 units per square. Right, there are 10 squares here. So 5 units per square means that 190 will be 2 units before that. So here, 190. And then the greatest value is 375. So 375 means this is 360, 370. So 375 is here. Right. Okay, then the Q1, 256. So 256, 255, and then 256 is here. And then Q2, 280. 280 means that it will be 4 squares from 300. Lastly, 329 for Q3. 329, so this is 310, 320, 32, this is 330. So 329 is Okay, so please draw using ruler. And this is the box plot, box and whisker diagram. So make sure you do not touch the this line, okay? Do not touch. Just use ruler and join it. 
Okay, done for this question. Now, B, find the inter-quartile range. So, inter-quartile range is basically Q3 minus Q1. So, Q3 already done just now. 3 to 9, then you minus 2, 5, 6. And you will be getting the answer of 73. Okay, question 7. A group of 6 teenagers go boating. There are 3 boats available. One boat can has room for 3 people. One has room for two people and one has room for one person. Find the number of different ways the group of six teenagers can be divided into three boats. So basically, the first boat has three, has room for three person, and then another one, two person, another one is one person. Okay, so basically, at first, you have six person, right? Six person. So for the first boat, I will have to choose three from six so after you have chosen three left three but then this three i have to choose two person to for the boat three uh, for the boat two so it will be three choose two so left the last one it will be just one way okay then from here i will get 20 times three times one that is going to be 60 ways Now, find the number of different 7-digit numbers, which can be formed from the 7 digits 223, 777 uh, and 8 in each of the following cases. So, here 223, 777, 8. Now, the odd digits are together and the even digits are together. So, from here, I will have odd digits and then I will have even digits. So, the, e, the odd will be 3 seven 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 and then for the even it will be two two eight okay so now i need to have odd together even together but the question doesn't mention must be odd first so it means that it could be or even first then followed by the odd okay so from here basically even first or odd first that will be two ways so this is number of digits. It will be two ways. Okay. And times. Odd number I have four. So I arrange this four. But out of the four, I have three. Three times of seven. Right. So divide by three factorial. Then. I times with the even number. So even numbers, it will be 3 factorial because 2 to 8, but then there are 2 times of 2. Okay, so this will be the solution. Then now here, you will get, this is going to be 2 times 4 times 3, at last 24. So the 4 factorial is for the odd. Okay, 4 factorial over 3 factorial is to arrange the odd numbers. And then the 3 factorial over 2 factorial is to arrange the even numbers. These two, these two is to arrange either even or odd, right? I mean, either even or odd first. So that's all for the explanation of this question. Now, the next part is the tools are not together. Okay, so I will rewrite all the available digits. 223, 7788. So, since the two, the tools are not together, means that now I will arrange the rest first. So, I will arrange 3, 7, 7, 7, 8. Okay, but then, of course, they are not in this order. So, it means that I have to arrange 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, I will write number of, the, number of numbers. It will be 5 factorial. But, out of this 5 factorial, there are 3, 7. So, 3 factorial. And then, now, times... The tools are not together means that now I need to allocate the two. So to make sure that they are not together, I can put them in any of the orange arrows. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
I have six places. But I need two. But then these two, okay, these two are say identical to. Therefore, I will just choose. I mean, I will use 6C2 instead of 6P2 because I do not need to arrange for the two, right? So, because they are identical two. So, here will be 20 times 15. Then at last, you are getting 300. So, you may use this way to calculate. Or another method is you use, this is another option. Okay, or you consider number of arrangements or number of numbers equals to those without restriction okay without restriction how many outcomes minus when the tools are together okay so i have not enough space so i better write below Okay, another option is here. Maybe you are not comfort with this method, so you can just write all number of numbers equals to n means number of how many outcomes with that restriction. Minus when the tools are together. Okay, so when you minus, when the tools are together, means that that is the tools are not together. So without any restriction, remember you are given 2, 2, 3, triple 7, and 8. So they are total of they are total of 7 numbers here. 7 numbers. Okay, but these 7 numbers, you have 2 times of 2, and you have 3 times of 7. That means now here we are arrange all of them. It will be 7 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial because 2 times of 2 and 3 times of 7 minus when the 2's are together. Means that now here, 2's are together. You still have 5 more left, but this 5 more you have 3, 7. So it means that this 5, here is 5, plus this 1 total you are arranging 6. That will be 6 factorial. But out of 6 factorial, 3 are 7. So that means over 3 factorial. But the two, this is treated as one group and both are identical. So we just have one way for that. Right? Therefore, this is going to be 420 minus 120. And you are getting 300 as well. Okay, so we have two ways to solve this problem. Okay, so I have solved the whole paper and also come to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and share this channel with your friends if you enjoy watching my videos. And also stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you everyone. Bye.